Good morning, everyone. We're back to the channel. Um, <clears throat> welcome back to another episode. Another episode of Cyber Attack Talk, where I give you all the tea on who has been attacked. All right, take two. This is my second time recording this, so let's see if I can get through it. All right, so let's get into it because I'm multitasking today, and I just want to get the video out today. So today we're talking about Flipper Zero which is a Bluetooth service, okay? Um, it is a remote control that interacts with different electronic devices. Um, it acts like a USB when it's connected to a port. Um, it is seen as a HID, which is a human interface device. So anything that can, that you can use to access something uh, physical like a keyboard um, where you can change settings um, a remote control that controls the garage uh, what else it is also used as a pen testing device um, so anything that allows you to have get access to something physical that's what it used for so how is it used as a hacking tool is that it can aggressively spam Bluetooth um, messages on Apple devices like the Apple iPhones, the iPad. Um, there was a YouTube researcher who actually put a video out on how it works. Um, that video will also be in the article below in the description so if you guys want to see how that works feel free um so how did it happen so the apple devices supporting bluetooth low energy <clears throat> which is ble it advertises um the package to announce their presence to other um devices um, so things like AirDrop, um, Apple Watch, Apple TV, um, those tools uses it. Um, the tool can spoof the AD, ADV package and transmitting transmit according to the Bluetooth low energy protocol, which basically means any device that use that that is Bluetooth um, B bluetooth low energy enabled um will get broadcast connection requests that's basically what that is um so what's happening next is in a nutshell be careful on who you accept requests from if you not if you if there's no person that you're expecting to get a request form, don't click on the link. Okay? Okay. Um, either that or you can hide your um, SSID name. And they won't know you there. Right? So, there were a few terminologies that I feel like I need to break down a little bit more um because i can see where it can be confusing a little bit if you're just not into the field so one of them is pen testing what is pen testing um it is basically an authorized simulated attack <clears throat> performed on the computer systems to evaluate their security. So it's basically your company paying someone. If they don't have it in-house, then a company can outsource this tool to pay someone to see if they can get into their network and find any vulnerability. And if that said paid person, a pen tester, is able to uh, breach your uh, the company's uh, security defenses then 
that person will write up a report and that networking team um security team will make the steps to fix that vulnerability within the system so that's basically that's what that is um then we've talked about a security researcher and it's basically an individual that finds vulnerabilities in systems learn why it happens and reports the results so those that's the researcher um so those two the security researcher just researched vulnerabilities and the pen tester actually tries to break into your system and what is spoof spoof is is someone or something that pretends to be something else in attempt to gain your confidence, um, get access to your system, steal data, money, or spread malware. So if the uh, Bluetooth devices, um, if you're constantly getting requests, there are pretending to be probably someone you know, um, or if you're in like a coffee shop area, they probably will send like a request if you're trying to connect to the coffee shop Wi-Fi um, or, you know, their connection, um, then you will probably see their uh, internet information comes up, but it's really not that official uh, coffee shop internet connection, right? So you just have to be careful on that part of it. Because once they get your Wi, once you connect to their services and you get their Wi-Fi, they get your Wi-Fi connection. They can get into your system. They can get into your phones and stuff like that. As far as I see, is I haven't seen Android on this particular one. Um, only Apple has been popping up. Um, but if it's Bluetooth, I don't see why Android would not be affected because Android devices, um, their phones do have uh, Bluetooth, is Bluetooth capable. Um, Android's phones can be Bluetooth. So I just be mindful, even though the article states Apple, just be careful on all devices. Um, and the next one is the BLE um, protocol. So it's a separate protocol from Bluetooth, um, also known as Bluetooth Classic. Um, the, the two protocols are not compatible, so they cannot work together. Um, BLE is designed for applications that demand the ultra low power but do not require the transmission of large amounts of data. So that what is what that is. Um, the article below will go, go into further details and you can also look at the YouTube video um, that's on there to see actually see how it works. So do your research um, and that is it. That is it. That is all. I am about to work on another video. You're probably going to see the same shirt. Don't worry about it. It's the same day. Multiple videos coming out this month. So in that case, I will see you guys in the next video.